Good morning. I'm sitting here on the side of a mountain waiting for some rattlesnakes to come crawling up this hill to a cave behind me and I thought I would talk about a very common topic uh, in our snake identification group and that is how to identify a Mojave rattlesnake or usually how it's put is is this a Mojave rattlesnake? How can I tell if this is a Mojave rattlesnake or not? And that distinction between the way those two questions are phrased uh, tells you everything that uh, you need to know about what we should talk about. So how to identify a rattlesnake, a Mojave rattlesnake, um, you can do largely without even looking at the characteristics of the snake, just logical operations. So that's what we want to talk about. So the first is, why do you think it's a Mojave rattlesnake? What indications do you have looking at the animal that that is or could be a Mojave rattlesnake? The problem is that for a lot of reasons, um, people tend to, and when I say people, I'm talking about all of us. I'm talking about this is the way our brains work. So I'm not singling anyone out. I'm not talking about, you know, none of this is disparaging. This is the way human brains work. Um, if we have it in our heads at the beginning, uh, before we even start evaluating what's there, that this is a Mojave rattlesnake or could be a Mojave rattlesnake. Instead of looking at the situation and the things you know and building up to the correct answer, you're starting out with maybe probably a wrong answer and then trying to convince yourself through evidence that it is not something. So what happens if you're not satisfied with the evidence or none comes in? Um, or the subjective reasoning of why you'd think or want it to be really, a Mojave rattlesnake to begin with, um, is stronger than the evidence that you're presented with. Then you're left with the wrong answer. You're left with the Mojave rattlesnake until proven otherwise with an asterisk on there of, uh, there's a big, big wide gamut there of what would convince any individual otherwise. So why do people do this? Mojave rattlesnakes are, they're famous for, for um, um, their misconceptions that are around them. Uh, first, is that they're hyper aggressive snakes and other other snakes are not. Um, this is this is not true. Um, I know it's common. I know there's stories. There's probably going to be stories in the comments here about Mojave rattlesnakes chasing after people and charging them. Um, let's it's it's time to grow up. We're just not accepting that as, as truth because it's it's not true. This has been studied. Uh, I just sat through two presentations at a conference at the Biology of the Fit Vipers where this was looked at. Um, tendency to strike. In one study, Mojave rattlesnakes were more likely to uh, to strike if attacked. In another, it was the opposite. Uh, but in no case was there anything other than defensive striking and uh, evasion. None, none of the snakes came after them. And yes, herpers, there are some times that you could contrive a situation where a snake would come towards you while you're standing at a den or or something. Okay, we're not talking about that. We're talking about when people have stories of they're walking around and a Mojave rattlesnake sees them and comes after them. And also, if you're hitting a snake with a shovel and it tries to prevent its own death, that's also not aggression. So, you know, not the topic for this, but let's get over it. Um, but that is one of the reasons that people are worried about Mojave rattlesnakes more than other snakes. The other is the issue of the venom. Um, and there's this kind of misconception out there, or, or I don't want to call it an obsession, but a, um, a fixation on the differences between a Mojave rattlesnake's venom and a tiger rattlesnake's venom and a Western diamondback rattlesnake's venom and LD50 or how it affects mice and its toxicity and all that. Um, and that is often kind of put out there as well. Mojave, you know, a diamondback will will hurt, but a Mojave rattlesnake is real bad news. You're gonna your your lungs are gonna freeze up and you're gonna die in seconds. And there's no no anti venom. Uh, it's all a bunch of nonsense. Um, don't worry so much about toxicity. If you're worried about snake bites, don't worry about it so much. It's it's really not uh, other than in a clinical setting uh, an important thing to think about. And the uh, metaphor I use sometimes, which which I think sums it up perfectly, is um, if you're standing in a bonfire, don't worry about what kind of wood is fueling the fire. There's lots of differences in the way wood might burn. But if you're standing in a fire, get out of the fire. That's all you need to know. So as far as danger, think about outcomes. What are the outcomes of rattlesnake bites? Um, it's very much similar to the topic of whether baby rattlesnakes are worse than adults or not. Um, don't worry about toxicity. Worry about things like venom yield or just get yourself to a hospital. 
That's it. That's all you need to know. Um, it is not the case when looking at clinical outcomes where a Western Diamondback is eh, and a Mojave rattlesnake is, eh, it's, it's not like that. In fact, it's actually the opposite in many cases. Uh, Mojave rattlesnakes in many areas are neurotoxic. Sometimes they have multiple types of toxins. Some places they are missing neurotoxin. You're not going to, it's not going to matter really if you're bitten. You need to go to the hospital. They're going to give you antivenom. It's the same kind. Uh, as the other ones, and um, you're going to be okay. You'll survive. So all of this kind of adds up to this reputation of a famous rattlesnake. And this is why I think that this topic comes up so much, is that there's all these rattlesnakes out there, but there's this category we've placed Mojaves on there above that, that make it more for people that are... Um, you know, subject to that misinformation or the, that cultural representation, um, it makes people more scared of them. It makes it more interesting. It makes it so that it's something um, that takes a normal rattlesnake encounter and elevates that encounter. Um, a lot of times this misinformation is, is spread by veterinarians, which I think is interesting and unfortunate um, that there, there's one one in central Arizona that that only treats um, dogs that are bitten by rattles by Mojave rattlesnakes with antivenom and and gives the other one Benadryl and says good luck. It's it's ridiculous, but I think it's all in that same vein of that you have this interesting scary snake in our culture. We have this boogeyman, and then you have down here all these other rattlesnakes, and that's why I think people look at it that way. So don't do that. If you see a rattlesnake and you don't know what it is. Don't start out with what you think or hope or are fearful that it is and work your way downwards. Start with the only thing that you do know, you don't know what it is, and look at evidence to try to um, to discover what it is. And if you don't have enough evidence for it, then the answer is not what you originally thought. It is, well, I don't know what that is. Um, the other thing you can do is just kind of look at the odds, okay? Um, in almost all, it's not all, but almost all of the instances where somebody puts up a picture of a rattlesnake and says, you know, OMG, is this a Mojave rattlesnake? It's not. It's a black-tailed rattlesnake. It's a Western Diamondback. It's a speckled rattlesnake. It's a Arizona black rattlesnake. It's anything that looks slightly different than a Western Diamondback. And in many cases, it is a Western Diamondback. So most of the time, if you're wondering what it is, it's not a Mojave rattlesnake, just, just by the odds. It's not the most common rattlesnake that's seen in most areas. It's not the most common rattlesnake that's going to show up, um, you know, on your, your local Facebook or next door page. If you're hiking, it's certainly not the most common one. In fact, Mojave rattlesnakes seen by hikers um, are, are probably in the lowest category of the rattlesnakes that are in the area because they don't live in places like this that people like to go hiking. They live in flat, sandy areas or just kind of, you know, open grasslands. These are not places that people tend to, tend to go hiking. So if you're in a hiking group in particular and someone says, I think this is a Mojave rattlesnake, it's probably not. If they're using green as a differentiator in there at all, then it's probably a blacktail. Um, or it's just a Western Diamondback with all the stuff that I just said applying. Um, and the last thing I'll talk about is just the location. Mojave rattlesnakes, there's a bee on me. Please don't, please don't bee on me. Okay, I'm sorry, it's too early for that kind of stupid joke, pun. Uh, <laughs> if you are in an area where Mojave rattlesnakes live, you can do the research right now to see if that's the case. Uh, if you're not, you can also do that research right now to see if that's the case. They don't live in all environments. They are specialists that prefer flatter environments, um, which is not where a lot of homes are. So if you uh, live in an area, and even if the locals have sworn up and down that they have Mojave rattlesnakes all over the place and they see them all the time and, and you should trust them because they're born and raised in the area and they know about wildlife and all that stuff, question it because a lot of times... There's the inverse of that, which is interesting to me, but it's something that holds up, is very often the more somebody identifies with being from an area, if their identity is more wrapped up in being a cultural local, they are very often or more often wrong about things like that. 
things like a Mojave rattlesnake and things like mountain lions and brown recluse spiders and all this other stuff that gets wrapped up into this kind of um, fog of, of, of mythology and, and um, you know, cultural self-importance. Again, not being disparaging to people. This is just the way our brains work and trends that I noticed and all that. So um, there's lots that could be discussed about traits, the differences, the physical characteristics between Mojave rattlesnakes and Western diamondbacks and everything else. Uh, we already made videos about that that I'm not going to do better of explaining right now. But the things that I see most often right now when, you know, we've been running this Facebook group for identifications for... Um, six years now, uh, it's 50,000 members in it. And still, when somebody's asking if this snake that they're looking at that they posted a picture of is a Mojave rattlesnake or not, reading through the comments and the posts, usually the reasoning why people have to think that it's a Mojave rattlesnake um, is not based on the animal they're looking at. It's based on a lot of other stuff that's wrapping around that potential. So. Um, Anyway, sun's a little bit higher. I should probably go see if these snakes are starting to come up here now. But just something on my mind, and hopefully it helps.